So. I don't remember exactly what colors we used. It's not very important. Remember a brown. Hello. So, some brown. I think, I think we used the screen. Green. And then we'll probably need some kind of pale skin or a yellow. Probably yellow. We might, we'll probably need a skin tone too, but that's okay. Uh, we can just use orange. And then we'll have some orange. Off to the side to mix in. So. That's basically our colors for the skin. Okay, and let's adjust. Come here. So we'll use some brown. Some of the green, this is going to pull some of the color out. And then some of this lighter green. Maybe just a touch of the orange. That gives us our kind of base tone we want for the skin. Then we're just gonna do some base coat. How's everyone doing this fine week? I probably would have left his spear off, but I needed to make sure that the hand's at the correct angle. So I left the top of the spear off, that's pinned. But the lower part of the spear really needed to, I needed to make sure that this was angled properly, so. Allergies are horrible. Yeah, I mean, we're in that season. A metamorphosis bust? Like, like a Kafka bust? <laughs> like a giant cockroach? That kind of metamorphosis? Weird. Is Freddy, hello, welcome. So, I'm 
just trying to get some some rough shadow colors down for the skin tone in case you didn't see the first part we based we did a zenithal prime and then covered ever the whole zenithal in like a dark brown to give a kind of base uh, a toned base to the figure uh, you could if you don't have an airbrush you could do this with like contrast paint or something or something similar uh, but this gives like a nice uh, tonal value to all the shadows adrian's art tends to have a lot of uh kind of sepia earth colors to it Right, so something that, and then I don't think he has much more skin than that. I think his hand, and that's it. Everything else is covered up, so significantly less skin on this guy than on on the uh, the previous one we did. Hi, Fenric. Hola, ¿qué tal? So most of his neck is going to be in shadow. I'm not super worried about uh, having to really highlight and everything there. Just get a good base coat of green on it. I can clean up kind of the areas around the collar and everything. And this is a classic mini painting advice of work inside out. Okay, I think that's about all the green. Oh, no, his hand. You can see we get pretty good coverage on in one layer, so don't have to sit here and try and do a whole bunch of layers and blah, 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 blah. You know, waste time going over top of everything twice. Done in one and move on. Yeah, these are these are the atom paints. Okay.
Middle East Beast. This is Redgrass and the uh, reusable membranes. I try and tell everyone that, like, you should test different papers, though, because depending on your environment, you will have different results. I live in a pretty humid environment. I use this wizard. So, depending on where you're from, your results may vary. Okay, we'll start to build up the next layer. Notice I'm just kind of sketching in the lights right now. I'm not overly concerned with blending. I just kind of want an idea of where this light placement's going to be. The main viewing angle also for this guy is a little offset because the three of them, there's one that goes in the middle. I'm not going to show him yet. He's actually mostly painted. And you might even, if you have eagle eyes, be able to see him in the background. Uh, but. Hey. Squeezel. Thanks for the, the tier one, the six months tier one and the gifted sub. Appreciate that. If you if you got a gifted sub, say say thanks to Squeezel. But yeah, so these two kind of flank the main the main guy. So they go like this. And then the, the guy in the center sort of stands shoulders forward. So um how his main light is kind of facing the viewer this way, right? Like it's it runs that like this as opposed to square to his shoulders it's offset the same thing is true for him so instead of him being like this we're going to offset the lights to be more forward this direction So more light on the side of his face as opposed to like directly front. This ear will get more light. Do these greens tend more towards blue? Do you mean blue or yellow? They're definitely more towards yellow. Do you know if the new Adam paints by MIG and Ammo? MIG and Ammo by Big Child are based. Wait, what? Can you rephrase that, Von Tartu? The they MIG and Ammo is the same company. Ammo MIG. Are you asking the regular? Is there, I'm assuming there's the Big Child Adam paints and then there's just the regular MIG Adam paints or Ammo Adam paints. Um, and the Big Child ones are formulated to their specification. Let me know if that's what you were asking or not.
So most of this side of his hand will be in shadow, but we can do a little bit of sketch, little little lights. Right. We still need to give some shape to it. Uh, they are going to be the Kickstarter. I don't know exactly how they'll be sold in the Kickstarter, but they do come with their own individual bases, so, and he wants me to photograph them individually. So they will come, I believe you will be able to buy them individually and also as a set, because they come with this base too. This is the base for the three of them. Yes, Ammo is the manufacturer. Big Child just is a it it is a collaboration with Ammo to make uh like their own set of colors. So it's colors to their specific uh wants. So because the light's kind of coming in forward, we're going to have a little bit of light on his shoulder here. But then most of it's going to get covered by his helmet and, and everything. So we need a little bit on his chest and neck, but not, not too much. Right? So we can do something kind of like that. So yeah, I use the orange here. The orange is basically just to desaturate. It also has yellow in it, so we don't lose the warmth of the green. We're just using the green. Basically, the, the orange acts like a complementary color and kind of desaturates it, makes it slightly more camo green-ish. We don't want radioactive skin. We want we want a kind of natural skin tone. Natural as far as you know, green skin can be, but it feels a bit more realistic than than like bright neon green. I do paint a lot of green skins. It's like people really want me to paint green skins for them. Probably the, I guess, race of creature that I paint the least. Well, besides dragons, I don't, I hate painting dragons. Uh, is probably humans. I think I paint humans the least of anything. Of humanoid, like, fantasy races. Paint a lot of, uh, Dwarves and, and elves and other stuff like that. Dwarves, elves, orcs, goblins. Not so many humans, though.
All right, I am going to do a historical. Yeah, but I'm not going to talk about it. You'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so we put a little bit of light on his neck there. Okay. And then we need to come in and find uh, one of these intermediate tones, and then here where this is all we gotta reintroduce some some of the shadow back into it. I'm gonna grab just a little more orange. You sure about that? So we can soften the transition there. And then we can kind of blend the stomach a little bit. I guess you could consider the the lady I did for Radia with the cats human, but she's like an angel, so. She's definitely not an elf. Okay, so now we can take and add even more lights and just a tiny amount of orange for this one. Soy Allen, hello. Hello, Allen, or Ola Allen, I'm not sure. So again, we're going to push the lights a little bit. We need to get him up to roughly the same value as this guy. That's why I've got him here, so I can kind of look at him and get an idea of, of how bright both of them are. Because I, I need them to match, right? They need to look like they're in the same lighting scenario. Here we go, no. Here we go, no. So what's, what's, what's a scenario? Makes sense. I know you guys are tracking. Go. 
guys are all like becoming experts. A little light for his belly button there. And grab a little more orange. We'll just make some adjustment here on the shadow side, just to add some some more interest over here. But yeah, as we work. So we basically paint the layer and then kind of blend that layer in. Right. Make that belly nice and rounded. And we'll push the light a little more also. All right, turkey. The mini mad cat, hello. Thanks for following. All right, so we just keep pushing the light. We don't want to overdo his wrinkles. At this stage, because we still have further to go. I think he actually seems to have kind of an orangish chin. I think so this one it's funny because this one has more of an orangish nose or kind of cheeks and nose and then on the artwork for this guy his nose is kind of green because he's got a big a big nose and he has what seems like a more orange toned chin so we're going to take and add more and more orange to this mixture and we'll make the the chin more kind of skin toned we'll also throw some in his ears So he's going to have a more humanish muzzle, I guess. We'll put a little in his cheeks too. Something like that. And then as we build up the light, we'll make adjustments so that he uh, gets a little more, like it both starts to transition from one to the other. So the, the chin, like around his mouth and chin, it's almost like he's got a humanoid five o'clock shadow. It's interesting. Okay, and let's blend this together a little more. 
we just keep softening this. It doesn't have to be perfect here, because honestly, if I make it a little imperfect, it makes his belly look kind of lumpy. Right? Like he's got... Like, uh, I think of like E-Honda, maybe there's, maybe there is a little abs under there, you know? Yeah, he's got that sumo belly. Then we'll keep pushing the light a little bit more. I think this is where basically our final highlight's gonna go. So we can push, push it way up to that yellow. let it dry i want to let it dry before trying to do anything else to it because if i don't let it dry and then i go to try and paint on top of it it's just going to lift up on the previous layer so i can do other work kind of around where it where it's at you know can make some little adjustments here and there Start to shift that light a slightly more orangish so it gets closer to like a sunny skin tone. I can put some lights on like his fingers. These will get blended out also. But kind of just placing lights for the knuckles. Gives me a rough idea for his face. Obviously, I need to come in and do more precision detail. But it uh, it gives like the rough shape. So here, right by the nasal fold, I want to push some of that green into there, and then as we move down to the chin I'm gonna go more yellow more orange and yellow so it's a very similar mix but this time just a little bit of green so you can see it becomes more like a this is more orange this is more green but they're they're the same tones So you can add a little of that. Give that skin tone feeling.
Do you try for a uh, do you try for a texture representation in your paintwork, or is it something that just kind of happens? No, I definitely if I in, if I'm intending to do texture, like I I it's very intentional, right? Um, there are times where I want texture. There are times where I don't want texture. Like his stomach, I don't really want any texture on. Uh, but when we go to do the non-metallics, I'm going to want, like, pretty heavy texture on that. So, yeah, it is, it's like, it's very intentional when and when I don't want it. Is it Naples yellow? No, it's just toxic yellow or some color from Vallejo. It's not like a specific, uh, pure pigment color or something. It's just some yellow mixed with white. It's a light yellow. It's basically ice yellow. But it's a slightly more yellow than ice yellow is. Okay, so I'll push the light even more. And I'll start to grab some of the closer color and begin to kind of blend this out. I can do kind of a stipple, small stippling if I want to create really subtle blends or I can thin it down. And glaze the blend, whatever is, you know, comfortable to you. There's not a right and wrong way to blend. Well, there's probably wrong ways to do it, but there's no 100% correct way to do it either. All right, so let's look at the highlights and see if they're similar. I would say they're pretty close. He's maybe overall a little brighter. So what we'll do is we'll let that dry and then grab some of this light color. And it's really thin. You can see you can see on my my finger just how thin it is, right? It's really watery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here kind of in the mid-tones and just push to the light a little bit. And that should brighten the kind of overall area. Subtly. And it's smooth. All right. So what I want to do is I want to come back to this initial base color. I'm going to mix some of that back up and I want this kind of thick. So this is, this is the initial color and I'm going to come in and I'm going to zoom in for this so you guys can see. I'm going to make a kind of subtle cast shadow here 
of his breastplate. And the light kind of comes this way and it needs to curve with his skin. So it kind of starts to curve down a little bit as it goes across that breastplate. And it slowly disappears into these shadow colors that we already have on the other side. And you can see that that cast shadow just fades away as you get into the form shadow and you get a, a small subtle little cast shadow of his of his breastplate going across his stomach. Easy? Wow! Wow! Hmm, though there's, there's a little more direct lighting on this figure. What else we got? Uh, I want to start to push the light on his face a little more. Any questions so far? I mean, I, I feel like it's uh... pretty explanatory, but you're always welcome to ask. Hi, Rubik's. Mr. Cube, how are you? Okay, we are going to exaggerate some of the volumes of his nose a little bit because I feel like that's a pretty important um, part of his character design. He's got this kind of big lumpy schnoz. Hello, Wilson. Okay, uh, one thing we want to do, well, let's, let's do the actual jaw and everything first before we go talking about that. We are going to do a cast shadow of his nose, but I want to basically 
when you're doing a small cast shadow like that's just like we did on the stomach instead of painting it in right away and trying to paint around it i think it is a little easier to to paint it as if it's not there and then and then uh put it in after then try and paint it right away which is what I would do on a larger cast shadow. Try and get some of his lower gum. just a touch of this orange in his cheeks makes him look a little friendlier you know he's a happy guy Man's just doing his job, you know? Okay, so kind of got the shape of his chin and everything in, but we still need to push the light more. And for this, I'm gonna grab my glasses because I need to be able to see his face better. Da -da. All right, let's see if we can. Eh, it's pretty well zoomed. Just make sure I need to bring it in a little bit because I need to bring the figure in a little. All right, let's see. All right, don't move from here. This is the spot. So we need to think about the, the sphere, right? Like, be just like the stomach, the, the sh shape of the lights are a little pushed to the side. So we need to make sure they're on the same side. So everything is going to be slightly more on the right.
Okay, see, we want to push some of that light right up to his lower eyelid. So we can define all these little features. So we give him some little lumps on his nose. We can kind of bridge these. And then we then we'll take an intermediate color. What is that? Bearded Jalapno? Bearded jalapeno. Let's give them, let's grab some of the brown and some of the yellow. This is going to create like this kind of way more desaturated green, like gray, grayish tone for the green. I'm going to grab and kind of make a light gray, more grayish green. And what this is going to be used for, I'm not really light, it's, it's pretty medium. Um, you're going to create a bounce light for his nose. Okay, this is going to help define the bottom of his nose against the shadow for one. We can go up a little, in the, but I'm not using the orange because I want it to be more desaturated. So you can see we have that dark green and this this grayish tone and we'll blend them together a little bit but this this will help define the bottom of his nostrils a little more give us a kind of bounce light to help him see the bottom of that nose a little better Cause his nose kind of sticks out so you get a little bounce light you can even see on my nose let me move that see can you see the bounce light on my nose I'll blend them in with one another. It's a really subtle effect, but in it does help uh, at a distance, right? Well, not at a distance, the opposite. Like when you look at it really up close, you can you can see it, and it and it helps to find that shape on the bottom. But if we zoom out, you can see it kind of goes away. It's a subtle detail, just adds a little something, you know. Adds a little something. Okay, areas like this. I want to push that light all the way up into the corner. It's really going to create a strong amount of definition right there.
Yeah, what is cold in Melbourne? That's a good question. And good morning. Thirteen? That's what, like fifty something? That's like fifty, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's not cold. That's nearly t shirt weather. You all the Wisconsinites being like, that is t-shirt weather. Are you kidding me? That's shorts and t-shirts. So, just continuing just to kind of blend some of these face shapes. I'm going to find these and then we need to blend the, we need to push the white on the chin a little more. Um, to do that actually, I'm just going to grab a skin tone. I'm just because I could mix something similar what I've got but it's easy enough to just I only need a touch so just grab some Maybe he's got some bumps and things, so a little stippling on the on the chin doesn't hurt. Uh, no, they're just some off of Amazon. They they go by a bunch of different names. These are, I mean, just look up magnifiers. 
on Amazon. They're like 15 bucks. They come with like a set. There's all different, uh, what's it called? They come with like a set of different magnifiers. Well, my reading glasses started to get like really scratched up and these are, uh, I had to do a lot of tattoos recently on a figure that required uh, some very fine magnification, so these were recommended to me by Mr. Albert Font, you might know him, he's uh He paints some really tiny models very detailed, so. I'm not gonna answer that, Sebastian. I'm not telling you nothing. Let's just grab a touch of the orange, this little bit of orange-green mixture, and just glaze a little across the chin. I'm going to darken the whole thing down just a touch so that I can then kind of brighten it back up. just the area I want. I just answered that. <laughs> Could someone just link these, please? I should get, I should do an Amazon affiliate link. Make the 20 cent off of them. They are Chinese, we built them and sold them to literally every company so they could stick their logo on them that's that's the that's the brand Yeah, they do make different ones. Um, I, I recommend not trying to wear them literally all the time, but... For doing things like this, where you gotta paint some tiny face, yeah, they're, they're pretty useful. Monument, hello. Hey guys. Hi Jason, how are you?
<laughs> yeah, they're super fancy. We've been talking about them. They cost like a whole 15 bucks on Amazon or something. I'm sure you could buy them wholesale from some Chinese manufacturer and slap the monument logo on them if you want. You can even say these are the ones Eric uses. No, if it was Green Stuff World, they'd uh, make release their own and then send a cease and desist. Badoom, shots fired. How's everyone doing? How's how's all the raiders, huh? What were you guys working on? What were you doing? The John Ninas calls them sexy dolls. Slayer, no. Golden Demon winning John Ninas. YouTube sensation. I oh know my sticker worked. I know he watches this. I know he watches the YouTube now, and so should you. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel in case you miss any week. Oh, my message to him was not subtle. He was pretty direct.
Okay, I think we are looking pretty good on the face. I have a little bit to do around the lower jaw, the lower lip. Who that? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I like that name. It's a good one. All right, we're just gonna. A little bit here. I think we basically have the color we want. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take a little bit more of the brown. Right? Are you are you guys ready for this? This is technically Gobbo three of three. I've already most well. I'm almost done with the second Goblin, the front the front one. But you guys aren't going to get to see that one. All right, here we go. Painting the cast shadow of his nose. So we just come down, find the nostril. Well, let me get on camera. And then it's going to go over top his lip right here. And then it's going to form a little shape on his chin. Ta -da. I know, and everyone was very impressed. Okay, so here's the thing uh, with these cast shadows. We can darken them a little bit up actually near the nose, right? Because the occlusion shadow where it gets closer will make it a little darker in the recess. Right, something like that. And I'm going to take just a little bit of this guy and do one more little glaze here and across his lip. Adjust that color. And then what we really need is a black to like line around his face, which will help uh, give shape to that. But there's a little more work to do on this side also. Paint smoother, they say. Who told you that? I mean, sometimes you have to paint smoother, but only if you're trying to paint something that's smooth. Now, the defining elements, that is important. You do have to create definition. Hmm. 
and that can be pretty hard. Kimmy and Eternix. Hello, welcome. All right, just create a little couple little spots here. Try and get that light into the corner of his eye. Yeah, refinement. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to take a quick break and then come back and maybe paint the eyes and the eyelids and maybe we'll start on something else but that's kind of roughly how to do the skin all right i'll be back in uh five hi welcome back how's everyone doing did you miss me All right, so let's grab some black. So we can line around his face. have to clean up some lines here talking about increasing definition right it's important that this step this is really going to help like separate his face from his helmet This is, this is a step I see a lot of people skip out on, and it can do a lot. Right, really helps. And I create that definition that we're looking for. All right, a couple other small details. I'm gonna grab some of the brown. Maybe we maybe I can zoom in for this. These are tiny, absolutely tiny. And I might have to fix the lips afterwards, but he's got little teeth poking out. Yeah, I got some on his lips, but that's okay, because that's easy to fix. Hard part is actually, I don't think you guys realize just how absolutely, you know, what's, what's something I can show like the size of? Here's the bottle cap. <laughs> that's the size of that tooth.
Yeah, it's literally like one dot to paint the tooth. Uh, could I ask? I saw that you were giving a class in October at Scale Model Challenge in Einhome, and I was wondering if you need to be a certain skill level to take it. Uh, um, you you need to. I would say it is for intermediate to advanced students. Um, you do need to at least know like what volumetric lighting is. I would say that is the big, the only real factor there. Right. So here you can see this tooth, I actually made it a little too big. So I need to come back in and kind of clean up the side. Red, red razor, hello. And then we're going to grab some more of the yellow. Grab it from this side. Here I'm not super concerned with the, the exact color. I just want to give a little highlight. Try and make it a little pointier. There we go. Toofy. Okay, now we'll grab the orange again for the lips. And just clean up where we accidentally touched with the brown Ta-da! Now he's got teeth. Okay. And then we're going to use this. Take some black with the skin tone to create this like yellowish gray. Elvathor. Hi. All right, here we go. I know I've talked about it already, but these have become my favorite style brushes for painting eyes and things. It's the fact that the, uh, like when you go to paint a dot, the chisel shape, you can see the chisel. Hold on. You see, these are like chisel shaped brushes, the arrow, dagger, whatever you want to call it. Uh, holds a the, like the chisel shape wants to hold it to a point so the point doesn't bend when you go to paint dots. So it's very easy to get the, the dot where you want it. When you're using a normal round, right? When you're using a round like this, it doesn't matter. 
when you what side you're using when you're using the point. All right. Zoom. All right. So when you're using a, a round like this, right? So this is a round brush. What happens when you go to try and do dots is see? See what happens to the tip? Boop. It bends one way or the other. I'll exaggerate. It really goes like that. You know, it like flexes and and curves one direction. Yeah, because you're just painting a dot, right? And when you when you do it with these, that curve doesn't really happen. I mean, yeah, if you press really hard, it's going to do it, but it, it wants to like stay in that point more. Where a, a round will quickly like do that. Make sense? I need just a little ivory for this. Hi, Dim. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the brown again. A little bit of the black. Now we can see if I can paint a dot inside this eye, right? Make sure I'm in camera. So it's much easier to paint little tiny circles and things with, with this shape. I find. Your mileage may vary. I make no guarantees that you will be a master of painting eyeballs just by changing your brush. I want that eye a little higher. I want that little bit of white on the bottom so it looks like he's slightly looking upwards. I mean, yes, it will 100%. Chimera says that they will this will improve your painting eyes or triple your money back. That's this statement is not legally binding. I do not represent Chimera models as part of the company. Okay, see, I get little white dots. See the little dots? Doop. Boom, one little white dot in the eye. Exactly where I want it. Nice and correct size. It's a game changer. This is, this is the best advertisement they can have for these brushes, I swear.
watch me paint an eyeball. There you go, and then I paint a little line around the lower eyelid. Ta-da! I don't know. What do you guys think? Have you tried them? Joe, you're asking me for, uh, that's, that's Twitch streamer stuff, all right? That's, uh, that's all, that's way too much for me. Uh, I don't do all the, sorry, but I've got no, no channel point redeems and no, uh, what's the other thing? Emotes, custom emotes. I'm a bad Twitch streamer. Yeah, I'll stick to I'll stick to painting. What I lack what I lack in uh Twitch gimmicks so I'm trying to make up for. Tease tease each. All right, welcome. Okay, uh, a little bit more work on the ears. Oh, thanks to each. I appreciate that. You're one of the good view you're one of the good top viewers. One of the good the good good EPPs. As opposed to those other guys who will never see this. I'm joking. In case I wasn't clear, I'm joking.
James Serum. Hi. All right. What else do we need to do on him? Well, on on the, his head, anyways. I guess we could put a little color in his ear. Thanks. So we just want to get a little bit of this color in his ear. Make it a little more natural. What we think about his head so far, I think it's looking pretty good. Now we can come back with the black and clean up some of this area that we got green on. Give up some hairs. Hairs where? Some nose hairs? Some ear hairs? He's got hair growing out of his ears. No, I'm not, I'm not giving him ear hair. <laughs> uh, when is this Kickstarter? I soon that's the best i can give you your i wish i had an exact date i'll bother carlos again later for uh him to actually like launch the the like coming soon page The, like, notify me Kickstarter page. Trust me, guys, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. I know that it's been soon for a while. Okay. Try and clean all of this stuff. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to black that out a little bit, clean that up. This is a little messy. This area you will never ever see, but I can see it. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do now I'm going to take some of this I'm going to thin it down a little bit It's not a glaze This is too too much paint to be a glaze This is more like a wash 
I'm just going to wash this chain mail. I'm going to make sure it gets all down in between all the little recesses of the chain mail. here around his, his arms and stuff. I want to make sure these are black because these are supposed to be like deep recesses. More chain mail here. Actually, he's got a ton of chain mail on his back, so we're going to make a nice big, big puddle. Hi, Chris. We're just going to go across all of this. Try and wash this down. Is that all the chain mail? I think so. Yes. All right. Cool. I'm going to take these off now. Don't need them for this. How's he looking? Like a goblin? He's a happy boy. Clean up this line around his stomach. Speaking of the our uh, Chris and this model in particular. If you were going to the Las Vegas workshop, you will be able to see these three guys in person because they are going to be at the museum. They are going in the museum. The Vault. Okay, let's, I had it here a second ago, where'd it go? Olive brown. You can see. Or, pardo, oliva. Oliva. Okay. 
It's like a greenish, brownish, gray sort of color. Right. We are going to use this as the starting color for our non-metallic. Well, the brown is really our starting color, and we're going to leave some of that brown. This is how we're going to build up. I think actually, well, I don't want to say anything. Never mind. I'm going to, uh, Keeping my mouth shut on that one because I'm not, I don't know if that's guaranteed. We could do the same thing with the chest plate. Good. Good, Dem. I'm glad you're painting along. I like it when people paint along with the stream. So you can see that even like this grayish color is not so different than kind of the brown that we have to start. When you put it on, it looks pretty similar. We want to keep that that brownish tonality. We're going for more of a cast iron kind of dirty steel than like a. We're not, we don't want this to look all polished, you know. And the back, we don't really have a idea of, but because we only have the illustration on the front to go with, he's also got some kind of weird symbol thing on his back. I don't know. We'll figure out what to do with that. But we're just kind of being rough, just sort of blocking in some of the gray. And then in some of the areas, we can come back and make it even darker. We can get closer to like a black tone. You see I'm kind of like a mix of stippling and brush strokes here to because I'm going to continue to build on top of this, and I'm sort of just creating a, an under layer to build, to build up. Yeah, it's a dry heat, you know? Sure, it's 110 degrees outside, but it's a dry heat.
All right, what else? What else? What else? Let's keep pushing. All right, so we're just gonna keep pushing some of this gray. Got his shoulder pad. So you notice I'm not leaving a lot of pure black, right? The reason for that is because you only really get these super dark pure blacks on really shiny metals. We, we actually want to reduce the contrast a little bit. In order to make the metal seem a little more rough. Robin Goodfellow, hello. All right, what's next? So we've got this. Now we need to get some some more neutral gray. Uh, sure, we can use iron hue. Shake, 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 shake. It's not 100% like just as long as it's a neutralish gray. Okay. The exact color doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter. It's just there's basically no color to that gray. Right. Doesn't lean really blue or towards any specific hue. It's just neutral. Alright, so I'm going to start to push the lights a little bit. And I can use kind of the shininess here to sort of figure out where this main highlight is going to go. I also have the, the art reference, but if you didn't have the art reference, You kind of know that the main shine is like right there. And you can kind of see the same thing here on the breastplate. It kind of goes onto the stomach. Yeah, you can see I'm really trying to like use like dots and stuff. I'm, I'm creating that, that kind of beat up uh, This like hammered, dented kind of effect. And as we build up layers, we'll create more and more of this sort of texture. Right now it's the texture is going to be like really heavy handed. And then as I work my way through more watery layers, it'll slowly begin to reduce the texture some it'll get a little bit smoother but I'm st it'll still have that underlying uh, variation Hi, Puffa, Puffa Blunt, Huffa, Huffa Lump. How are you? Welcome. Okay, see, so I just keep kind of dots and lines and dots and 
This is how I build up the this hammered beat up texture effect. And I want to make sure I get just, I'm really more focused on these kind of larger areas first, and then I can always, uh, I can do, I'll do the edges later. I just need to get kind of into these areas. Thank you. What you painting? So, build the light up. Don't need to save much of this dark color. Like I said, the dark color is going to be... When me the rougher metallics are, the less like metallics they act. Okay? So there's all kinds of ox oxidization on the helmet that kind of makes it Sort of rough and more like rust, and rust is not a metal. So you start to it starts to act more like a normal material. Oh, let me get my. Where is it? Is it in the right? No, it's sitting right here. Wish I had something to stick it to me. So I could be like, I am low. I am low. Dude, Dread's badass. I really wish they had, uh, Where's that TV show? I love that movie, the Carl Urban one. That movie's awesome. They were supposed to do a TV show. At some point, that was like in production or pre-production or something. And I never heard anything about it. Just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. Mega City 21 or something. Mega City one? I think it's just Mega City one. Where that at? Yeah, that movie's great. I liked it a lot. How do you plead? That's uh, the other one. Which is one of the, the dumbest. What's it called? Lines. Stallone lines ever. Hey, you plead. Uh, not guilty. Rob Schneider. I knew you'd say that.
Right, so now I can start to put some of the, the edges on just to give a little more shape and definition to these. These will get adjusted, but gives kind of an idea. Yeah, the, well, the teaser for the, the TV show, yeah, they like, that was a long time ago. It was kind of like the announcement teaser that like, hey, we're working on this. I don't know, there was a writer's strike and COVID and everything, so who knows? It may have fallen into production hell. And it's just never coming back. So the whole top of his head needs to be a little brighter. So normally, and we'll eventually put that main highlight back here. But so normally that this would be not nearly this bright. Or this diffused, I should say. Not necessarily bright, because the top of a shiny helmet could st still be very bright based on how bright the, the sky is. But it would not be this dis diffused because you get sharper reflections the more uh, shiny an object is. Did that Dread movie not do very well? Because I feel like it was, uh, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it didn't perform very well. Because it was a really good movie. I definitely feel like they could have done a sequel. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, King Dixon. Uh, you have to... A lot of times your your brain recognizes that something is wrong. Like your eyes see it and go like, hmm, that's not right. But you don't know why it's not right. So it takes a lot of study and analysis to begin to really like understand materials and how reflections work. Okay, so you can see, start to push some of these edges. Oh, really? That's too bad. random little factoid about that movie the the girl who plays the psychic character uh, the the judge the trainee judge her brother is also an actor he plays noho hank and barry
50-50 with crystal ball. I think Carl Urban might be one of my favorite actors. Criminally underutilized in the MCU. And if you forgot who he was in the MCU, I'm not surprised. I was talking about this the other day. I can't believe that they recast Thunderbolt Ross with Harrison Ford. I was like, dude, Her how old is Harrison Ford now? Like... Viking baby raised by Native Americans. You mean the movie, the hit movie Pathfinder? Get off my damn plane. Oh, Harrison. So, I'm going to keep pushing the light. Building up layers this way. Oh, yeah, he was Caecilius. Did you know that his brother plays General Thon? Speaking of actor siblings, he plays his brother is Grand Admiral Thon. Push, 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 dot, 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 right. It helps if you make sound effects while you're stippling. This is a, this is a fact. So that's a pro tip for you guys.
All right. So these look kind of shiny right now, right? These, this, this uh, well, it looks bright, that, that gray that's on there. But you're going to see when I go to add an even lighter gray. Ooh. Mm. That feels, that felt great. Let me tell you. See ya. You can see we're going to push a little more and suddenly well, let's, let's just let's just go let's go up right let's go up quite a bit because okay. this is like what we're going to get to that kind of brightness and you can see now that the chest doesn't feel quite so bright anymore As we put like some really shiny placement on there kind of tones everything else down by contrast huh we don't want to overuse this like we want to save because this is like a really bright shine we're gonna we're gonna use this kind of sparingly mostly for to define edges and such. Okay, so something like that. So we're starting to get up, get into that, that beat up helmet territory but this is still just like 50 percent or a third of the work you know we gotta we still got a lot of little things we can do to make this metallic more interesting and one of those things is to take some of this orange some of this brown that we used in the skin tone, right? We're gonna mix those together. We're gonna to create this this kind of dark orange, right? And we want to thin this down, right? And we want to make sure we get most of it off. We don't we don't want a lot, just a little bit, and then nice and thin. Now we can come in in some areas and start to stipple in some some oxides, some rust, some weathering dirt, things like that. This helps pull in some of the colors that we've used elsewhere on the model. These are going to show up a lot in the uh, the leathers and stuff too. These orange browns. You can see that it's it's nice and thin. That even, even that might be a little too thick. If we want to do it as like an actual glaze, right? We just want to affect the color a little bit. Right? And these glazes and filtering color. And we, we actually don't I don't mind if it pools. Like one of 
often one of the problems with glazes can be that it like where you lift the brush it kind of leaves a little like pool that's good here we want that mm -hmm. and i can come back and begin to kind of soften some of these areas down glaze back over top Okay, smooth some of this stuff out. Anywhere where there's little dents and things, we want to try and get some some lights on those. Because the, the direction of the metal sort of changes. We get a little light on them. We can make up our own dents. Oh, huh? it's magic. Okay, something like that. And create little scratches and so if you create little lines so it's not just dots you can also do little little lines and things just combine different shape directions try and make it random Random in that way, but not random in, in necessarily placement because we want the lights to still make sense. Okay, so now you can see that it's starting to have that weathered metallic look to it. And we can really come in kind of at the end. Blurring on you. All right. And we get a few spots on kind of the edge. Notice I'm not painting normally like when I do metallics like this. If I was doing non-metallics, I'd use like uh the side of the brush to do like a brush stroke along the edge. Here I'm more trying to do dots because I want that kind of like dented edge. So the little dots on the edge make a kind of glares that give the sensation that that edge is not perfect.
here I can paint some the spikes. Put a couple more little scratches and, and dots. Okay. And then what else do we need to do? We got to put a little highlight on the spikes too. Hi Dave. So we get something like that. All the spikes need a, a light on them. And they change where they would be based off of what the lighting, what the angle of the spike is. And you have to go around, make sure kind of the base of them is clean. You don't want like a big blob of black, like around the base of the spike. You want it to kind of look like it's part of the helmet, right? They're not like glued on top of the helmet. They're like welded onto the helmet or whatever. Welded in the blacksmith welded sense, not welded like modern welding. Okay, uh, and then I can grab some of this color. All right, we can kind of play with some more tonality. The more subtle tones that we add to the metallic, the better. And then the last little bit. Here. We can grab some, this is ink, smoke. Thin it out. It's like a sepia, basically. We can use this to create some more color we can also use it to kind of enhance the uh, shadows of like the rolled edge to the armor, add some depth. And there you go. And that's it. Super easy beat up armor.
You're all experts now. Can't wait to see all of the uh, the future posts of no one's doing shiny metallic anymore. Everybody's doing super weathered non-metallic metals. Everybody's got dented armor now. It's a joke. You can do what you want. That's why I'm te that's why I'm explaining it. See y'all. Uh, oh. I do think, like, um, there is, you know, it would be nice to see some other variations and non metallics. Like, I get, it's fun to paint very shiny, you know, non metallic, but I, I think there is room for other kinds of non metallic, right? Not every. Not every character needs to have super shiny uh, effect. Overrated. Thanks for the prime. Thanks for the nine months. Appreciate it. And what else? What else? What else? So I guess I have to do the spikes there. Uh, let's do the chain mail real fast. Let's let's try and do some chain mail. This is gonna be maybe a little difficult to see on stream. These are very small links. But the idea when doing chain mail, I can basically skip right to the kind of middle gray, right? So the lengths are, what we want to do is anywhere on that donut shape, we want to paint like here, I'm going to paint the bottom left of every ring unless the ring is in a different orientation. And then I'm going to paint the top right of every ring. Oh, I'm way off camera. My bad. Let me get back. I still have half of it to do. More than half. All right. So top right, bottom left. This is dependent on which direction the rings are facing, what direction the light is coming from. This is going to work for this figure, but you need to think about where the light would catch on the ring. But essentially, if one edge of the ring has light, has a reflection of it, the top edge of the other ring would have light on it. So let me draw this real quick.
our whole fancy pad here. Thanks, Kimmy, for the tier one. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. So you have a ring. Right? A donut. Based on the, uh, you have to think of it like a, it's a cylinder, right? Just like we did down here, the cylinder. Okay. So the light comes in and if you have a reflection here, right? On this top of the ring, you get the same reflection here on the inside edge on the opposite side of the ring, right? If you had one here, like this, you'd have one here, like this. They're, they're symmetrical. But this one's on the outside edge, this one's on the inside edge. If it was on, if it was OSL and it was light coming from the bottom, it would be on the outside edge of the bottom, on the inside edge of the top. Blah, 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 blah. Just make sure they're always symmetrical across the center. I, I appreciate the six months advance, Kimmy. <laughs> Very nice of you. I appreciate all the support, guys. These have an LED too. They like go into the top. They're right here. Um, I don't use them. I've never turned them on. Uh, there's enough light that I don't need the LED. These are lighter than the white version. I've I've used the white versions before. These are lighter. I think Ricardo had the white ones. And yes. The black the black are a bit lighter. Like, they're light enough that I don't even need to rest them on my ears. Like, I can just pinch them on the side of my head, and they stay they stay up. So that, you know, if you're not a glasses wearer and you're like, oh, I don't want anything weighing on my ears, these do not. They're very lightweight, especially if you remove the LED. Okay. So something like that, just to get kind of the, you can see the individual rings. Now there's probably some in here that I did not get any light on because they're uber, uber tiny. They're so small. There is some like absurdly tiny, tiny detail on this figure. Um, but yeah, yeah, I can just try and like hit it with sort of the edge. And then 
Then we come in with the light gray and kind of find those angles and say like, okay, this one's going to get the top right, plus it needs the dot at the bottom left, same here, bam, bam. And maybe this one gets it on the side because it's a different orientation. But don't overthink an effect like this, right? We're just trying to get the rough idea. What I need to do is I just noticed that there's a little, I need to come in and kind of push the, the gray here as close as I can, leaving a little bit of black in between the rings and the, the steel armor. just to clean up that edge and make it very clear that there's two separate materials there or where that edge of the, the armor stops and where those rings begin. Right. Yeah, Fabrizio uses a lot of glazes. I don't use a lot of glazes. I use some, but not like uh, some people that paint like almost entirely in glazes. So anyways, that's uh, how to do kind of quick, quick NMM chain mail. It's like three layers done. Um, if I wanted to get a little fancy, I could do the same thing with the kind of the rust effect. Grab some of this. And just in between a few of the chains. Just kind of come in and place some dots. Kind of move it around. I can rust up the mail a little cool all right so and then obviously i've got to do you know the back and do all the edges on this side and figure out what the reflections are over here and do all the shoulder and everything. But it gives you a good crash course in, in how to do uh, this kind of metal. So, hope that was helpful. We're gonna call it there for tonight and we will jump up. We'll see if anyone's online.